Welcome to ECE 376 Embedded Systems. Uh, I'm Jake Lauer, and this is one of my all-time favorite courses. The reason we go into engineering is we want to build things. Well, this is the course where you get to build stuff. Now, start out. What is an embedded system? An embedded system is basically anything that includes a microcontroller, which is kind of like everything. Typically, you've got sensors. Uh, that measures what's happening in the real world. Buttons, light sensors, temperature sensors, things like that. You've got outputs. You're driving LCD displays, LEDs, stepper motors, so on. And coordinating it all is a computer, a little microcontroller, so that I can use software to control the inputs or control the outputs based upon the inputs. So this is a fun course where you get to build, program, test, and demonstrate various devices and having a microcontroller really frees up what you can do. So that's kind of what makes this class kind of fun and interesting. You've got a computer controlling inputs and outputs. In addition, this is a junior level course. And typically at the junior level, students don't know what they don't know. So really what I do is kind of go over things you can do. There are 30 lectures in this course. And likewise, we cover 30 things you can do with the microcontroller. Now, in terms of the course content, we're going to start out in assembly. Uh, assembly is the low-level program on a microcontroller. It's where you have direct access to the inputs, direct access to the outputs, direct access to the registers. Assembly is very fast, very powerful, and very painful to use. That's how computers actually work. In addition, we'll have binary inputs, where 0 volts is logic level 0, 5 volts is logic level 1 and we'll convert switches, temperatures, things like that to binary inputs. I'll have binary outputs. I can turn on and off lights, heaters, dry speakers, and motors. So here, for example, is a light sensor that's tied to an op amp to convert the light level to 0 volts, 5 volts. You can see with the LED and a counter. Right here, it's counting in binary how many shadows appear. So this is one thing you'll be able to do. I can build a counter so I can measure how many times the refrigerator doors opened overnight. Well, one of the problems with assembly is it's really powerful. It's also really hard to do anything. I call it like pulling teeth. After week four, we'll switch over to C. Now, C is a higher level computer language. It's got great things like it has access to a multiply command, divide, for loops, do loops, while loops, and so on. You should have had 173 C programming. If you forget most of your C code, don't sweat it. The main thing we're doing in this class is if you understand, remember what a subroutine is, if statement, for loops, while loops, you're in good shape. What C programming does is it lets you do a whole lot more than you could with assembly, but it's a little bit slower. Typically C code is three to 10 times larger and slower than assembly. But with C, it really opens up what you can do. With C, I can drive an LCD display. I could read a keypad. I can drive stepper motors. I could read analog inputs, like temperature, lights, and so on. I can collect data. Example here is a program that you'll be building. It, it drives the LCD dis display, shows how many steps have gone by, and drives the stepper motor. With C, you can also measure analog signals. So here, for example, I'm reading the analog signal. This is the raw A to D reading and the corresponding voltage. I can build a voltmeter. If I can build a voltmeter, I can build an ohmmeter or a light sensor, temperature, and I can start to collect data. Now, once you collect the data, to analyze the data, you typically need to use statistics. So we'll be covering statistics in this class. Uh, you're gonna be taking a course on statistics, 341 random processes. The problem with random processes is, is it's how to analyze data without actually having data to analyze. Well, in this class, we can collect the data. And likewise, we'll look at some ways to analyze it. The final topics in this class is a really powerful, really confusing concept called interrupts. Now, interrupts are subroutines called by hardware. It's really powerful, but really confusing because somebody else is calling subroutines in your class or in your code. If you can figure out interrupts, you can measure time, 200 nanoseconds. I can control binary outputs to within 100 nanoseconds. I can react to rising and falling edges within five microseconds. I can implement digital filters, like a low-pass filter, high-pass filter. I can read a GPS sensor. 
all things you can do with interrupts. And finally, at the end of the semester, we'll be looking at your term project. Now, the term project is where you demonstrate your ability to build, test, and demo an embedded system. If you go to Bison Academy under Best of 376, these are typically term projects from previous semesters. Um, they're kind of fun to watch and kind of illustrate what sort of things you'll be able to do by the end of 376. So that's kind of a bit of background on embedded systems. As far as course information, I'm Jake Lauer. Class meets Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. The labs are open labs. The, you can do the labs in ECE 211 and 237. You can also do the labs at home. You'll be getting a lab kit and everything you need to program this, pretty much everything should be in your lab kit. If you need to measure frequency, you can use your cell phone. Uh, cell phone is a great way to measure frequencies with some of the things like piano tuner. My office hours are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. in room 201 and on Zoom. The textbook is Bison Academy. It's free. As far as the bulletin description, uh, this is the use of microcontrollers, basically uh, controlling outputs based upon inputs controlled by software. The objective of this course is by the end of the semester, you should be able to solder a circuit board. You should be able to make or interface a microcontroller to binary inputs and outputs like push buttons, temperatures, sensors. Be able to interface a microcontroller to analog inputs and outputs. Be able to control these inputs and outputs using assembler and C. And be able to use interrupts to control the precise timing of a microprocessor. Now, Everything in this course is on Bison Academy. If you go to bisonacademy.com, you'll see the landing page for most of the courses that I teach. Click on 376, it'll take you to the Embedded Systems class. Uh, there, the home page is the syllabus for Embedded Systems. Here, we've got the lectures on a daily basis. These are PDF files that you can read and follow along. All lectures have been recorded and posted on YouTube along with a YouTube playlist if you want to invite your friends and neighbors over and binge watch the lectures in Embedded Systems. Oftentimes in lectures, I'll be going over some sample code and demonstrating how to do things like binary inputs, binary outputs, build a one key piano. Uh, these are the codes and, and the homework assignments. All the homeworks are posted on Bison Academy. Homework is typically due on Monday. On Wednesday, we'll go over the homework and I'll also post the solutions on Wednesday, along with the YouTube recording where we go over the homework for the students taking the class online. On the homework, if you get stuck, a good place to go is homework sets and solutions. These are the homework sets and solutions from previous semesters. Now, for most of these, I've stripped out the code, so you can't just copy the code, call it good. Um, but kind of give you an idea of how to set up the hardware, do the flowcharts, set up the, the programs. If you want to start programming, what I suggest is go back under sample code. It's a lot easier modifying a program than starting from scratch. So here you can start with some basic programs that they work. They don't do necessarily do what you need. Then modify them to do what you need. Another fun part of Bison Academy is best of 376. These are typically the term projects. They're also occasionally homework assignments. Each week you're asked to design embedded systems. And here you go through the entire design process, specify the requirements. What are the inputs? What are the outputs? What's it supposed to do? Design the hardware to meet those requirements. Design the software to meet those requirements. You then test to make sure the hardware works, test to make sure the software works, and then validate and demonstrate. Validate that you're, you met the requirements and demonstrate. A good way to demonstrate that your program works is to make a YouTube video. And these are typically the YouTube videos that people made over previous semesters linked with the student's permission. It's kind of a fun way to keep record of what you've done in this class. It's also something you can put on your resume. Uh, employers have asked, if you're an art major, you have a portfolio showing what I've done. 
Well, you can do that in this class as well. Keep records of your various uh, homework sets and class project by making videos. Uh, videos work for YouTube pretty much forever. So once you get your video made, you don't have to worry about your hardware falling apart. The video is still there. It's a nice way to, de to demo your project. It's a nice way to archive and record what you've done. You can also demo your projects in person. Now you've probably noticed there's this little board that I've uh, been using in the videos. That's the lab kit. All students are required to purchase a lab kit and you can either buy them from me or actually pick them up from me, $65 with a check or cash written out to SWE, Society of Women Engineers, or you can order your own parts. What SWE does is they order the parts over the summer in bulk and that reduces the cost quite a bit and pass the savings on to you. There is a slight markup. It's a fundraiser for SWE. If you don't want to do that, you're more than welcome to buy the parts on your own. Um, it's about double the cost, though. For a programming class like this, it's a whole lot more fun if you can see your program work. For an embedded systems class, where your program controls outputs based upon the inputs, you really need the hardware. Because I'm going to be pushing the buttons, like when I build an A-key piano, I want to go beep, 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 and I hit the different buttons. You're not going to see that working, verify that it works, unless you actually have the hardware. So that's kind of what this board does. It's uh, an evaluation board that you'll be building over the first three weeks. It makes the course a whole lot more fun. And you also get to learn some soldering. Now, about a third of the boards will quit working halfway through the semester. If that happens to you, don't panic. I've got a dozen uh, spare boards in my office. We're going to swap them out, swap it a working board for your not working board. I can usually fix your boards in about 10 to 20 minutes. It's usually just a bad solder connection. Um, so again, if your board works, don't panic. You need your board to do the homework. But what I ask is for the first three weeks, first three weeks will be soldering up your board. If you've never soldered before, I'm glad to help. Um, that's kind of what I'm here for. It's not too hard. Soldering is tedious, but it's not hard. If you're patient, you can get your board soldered. And also, it kind of seems like all electrical computer engineers should solder at least once before they graduate. Here's your chance to solder. Now, in terms of how the course is offered, this course is offered in the full HyFlex mode. What that means is you can attend any way you like. If you signed up for the in-person class or the online class, it doesn't matter. Everybody is welcome to show up in person. There is always plenty of seating. You can live stream the class on Zoom. I'll post the Zoom link on Blackboard. And you can also attend the class online. All, all lectures have been recorded and posted on YouTube. So you can take the class to any way you like. You can also change on a daily basis. If you feel like showing up on Monday, watching the YouTube videos on Wednesday, fine with me. I don't care. As long as you can do the homework. That being said, in-person is better than online. I've been teaching in-person for 32 years, um, online for the last four, so I'm better at in-person than online. That shows up in the class averages, that shows up in the course evaluations. So in-person is better than online, but if online works better for you for whatever reason, you're more than welcome to take it online. In terms of how the course is graded, there are three midterms, homework every week, a term project at the end of the semester, and a final exam, all equal weighting. So take the average of all those, and that's your overall score. If you have a 90%, guaranteed you have an A. 80%, guaranteed you have a B. I'll curve down, but it won't curve up, meaning 89%, it may or may not be an A. Uh, last semester, 89 was an A. This semester, don't know but 90% guaranteed is an A. The reason I do that is if you study together, you all learn the material, I'm happy to give out all A's. I'll have to justify that to my chairman, but if I can show that everybody understood binary inputs and outputs, analog inputs and outputs, assembler coding, C coding, and interrupts, that's an A. Now, in order to get an A or a B, you need to do the homework Programming is like, like weightlifting. Watching somebody else lift weights doesn't do you any good. You gotta do it yourself. 
Likewise with programming. If you watch me write the programs, you read the solutions, it all makes sense. That doesn't really help. You got to write the programs yourself. You got to go through the suffering of trying to get your code to work. Writing code, well, when you write your code, think about how you're going to test it. Write the code, write a small part, test it, uh, add to it, test it. You need to test your code as you write it. If you do that, the homework really shouldn't be that bad. And that's one of the things we'll be talking about in this class, how to write code that you can test. Oftentimes the grades in this class are bimodal. Uh, what that means is that the class average typically does this. So these are the A's and B's. These are the peoples that did, did the homework and know what they're doing. Uh, these are the C's, D's, and F's. These are the people that did not do the homework or they're in a group and they give moral support to the people in the group. Come test time, they have no idea what's going on. Do the homework. The test really should be pretty easy. If you did the homework, you understand the code, understand how to write code, understand for loops, do loops. Um, you don't want to learn the material on the test. In terms of the homework, on the homework, groups of one or two are allowed. I don't allow groups of three because when you have three people, invariably one person gives moral support. You got to do the homework. You got to write the programs yourself. Boeing actually did a study and found that two is the optimal number in programming classes because if you have one and you get stuck, you're stuck. With two people, you can kind of help each other when you get stuck. With three, uh, again, somebody's always giving moral support. But you're kind of your pick. Uh, the homework is submitted typically on Mondays. You can submit as a hard copy. You can submit by email to me, or you can submit on Blackboard. You know, e either way, I don't care. The exams are to check that you're doing the homework. If you do the exam, or if you do the homework, exams should be pretty straightforward. If you're not doing the homework, uh, you'll probably really struggle on the exams. And these are kind of samples of uh, homework sets people did. There's a security passcode. Type in your passcode one two three four. A stepper motor opens and closes. Uh, playing speakers. I can have three pick boards playing the Mission Impossible theme. I can have a padlock solver. It'll sit there and go through the combinations and find the combination for padlock, how to pick a padlock with a pick. Things you can do. In addition, many assignments are open-ended. I'll ask you to do something with measuring time to one millisecond, or do something with driving a speaker or do something with a separate motor. Your pick what it is. That makes it kind of nice because it makes it easier on me. I don't have to dream up different assignments every semester. It's more fun for you because you can tailor the homeworks for your own interests. Uh, and typically what the homework includes are the requirements. I mean, tell me what it is you're gonna do. The hardware and software to meet those requirements. Check your code, check the hardware and demo it. So that's kind of an overview of the class. It's one of my favorite classes because again, you get to do things. In terms of legal stuff, attendance is required. How you attend is up to you. You can attend in person, you can live stream, you can watch the YouTube videos, whatever works for you. If you have any special needs, let us know, we'll accommodate you. In terms of academic honesty, the point behind academic honesty is this is the information you're going to need on following courses, especially senior design. This is information you're going to need when you graduate. If you find a way to get through this class without learning anything, you're going to really struggle when you get to senior design. You're going to really struggle when you get to industry. Our graduates design pacemakers, defibrillators, flight controllers, things like that. You need this information when you get to industry and start working on your job. It's better to learn it now then be unable to do your job when you graduate. So, you know, please do the homework. And if you're a veteran, again, something comes up, we'll work with you. So that's Embedded Systems. Again, one of my all-time favorite classes. Uh, and hope you enjoy it too. It's a class where you're actually going to get to build things and uh, use C coding and assembly to build stepper motors, pianos, reflex timers, um, all sorts of things. So with that, we'll move on to the first lecture.